stocks under pressure as tensions escalate between Russia and Ukraine. Investopedia with a new survey showing geopolitical fears among the top concerns for individual investors. Joining us now is Investopedia CEO Caleb Silver, an old friend, of course. Caleb, great to see you. Great to be with you as always. Thanks for having me. The survey was really um, eye opening to me because it, it basically found that investors are buying the dip. Yeah, they're uh, fearful, they're a little anxious, they're a little bit rattled, but they're looking for opportunity. And that's pretty consistent with what we've seen for the past two years. We started this survey in February of 2020, right before this was declared a pandemic, about two years exactly. So worried and bank playing it a little bit safer with ETFs and index funds, but looking for opportunities to buy the dip whenever they can and looking for it in some of the biggest stocks they've been owned, they've owned for the past two years, Melissa. Are you getting the sense that this is the same investor who is investing in things like the ARK Innovation ETF and that there's been a real change in mentality? Yeah, but these are also tried and true investors who like the home cooking, who like the large cap stocks, who like the big ETFs and the big index funds. So they've experimented with ARK and with other investments, and they've told us as much, even with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But these are self-guided investors, do a lot of their own research, but fearful of the same things that all of us are fearful about, inflation, rising geopolitical tensions, rising interest rates. So they experiment a lot, but they are pretty, pretty core investors and stick to those large caps when they can. Hey, it's Tim. So what what are these core investors excited about? Um, and, and again, I, I hear what you're saying, that they're they're going back to some basics on, on some of these core companies that have pulled back. Anything that they're excited about out there? Because it does seem like the, the sentiment is awful. Yeah, you know what we find whenever there's a lot of anxiety, we always have a good handful of our readers who are looking for opportunities. So they're looking for ways to play oil. They're looking for ways to play the inverse of the S&P 500, betting on future declines. They're looking for opportunities to trade where the damage has been done the most. And that's not very different from what we've been seeing for the past two years. Of course, they're fearful like the rest of us. But whenever there's opportunity, whenever there's a lot of fear out there, we always find a good handful of our readers looking to buy the dip on particular stocks and particular sectors that have been hit the hardest. They do think that there's a bubble out there. And so some of the things where they see bubbles, I thought really interesting, 33% Bitcoin, 30% NFTs, 20% NASDAQ 100, and also the S&P 500. So it's really across the board. Yeah, even after a lot of the pain we've seen across a lot of those assets, of course, Bitcoin and NFTs and Dogecoin also on their list of biggest bubbles, U.S. residential real estate also on the list. That makes a lot of sense. But even after the tumbles of some of those risky assets, they still feel like they're bubbly out there and they feel like there's a lot of froth. So there could potentially be more downside if they stay away. Now, we've noticed over the past two years they were buying into a lot of cryptocurrencies, some, some of them adding crypto for the first time in their portfolios ever. I think they may have learned the lesson of how volatile those assets can be. So they think they're still the biggest bubble out there. But also they thought it was an EV stocks as well. You mentioned the NASDAQ 100. Even after the fall of Melissa, a lot of folks still feel a lot of frothiness out there, even though they're willing to buy those dips when they appear. Yeah, SPAC's up there too. Caleb, it's always great to see you. Thanks for your Thanks time. Thanks for having me. Caleb Silver of Investopedia. It's a good, new, it's a good sign that investors are, are getting back in, Karen, buying this dip for the long term. I think so. I mean, you know, I would say buy when there's blood on the streets, even if it's their own. It's my own. I didn't buy anything today, but there's a lot of things that I'm looking to buy, very little that I'm looking to sell. But in terms of, you know, this uh, momentum, we talk about a pendulum and it doesn't swing and stop at fair value. It keeps going until it's way below value. And I don't even know that we've gotten to fair value yet for some of the real high flyers. So that that sector is not for me. Yeah, I would say, Mel, I'm not so sure it's so great that they're getting back in right here. If you think back to the last time the Fed was hiking rates in 2018, right, when the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield topped 3%, here we are at 2% right now, the S&P 500 sold off 20% in what felt like a straight line over two and a half months. And so we are down 10% right now. And here's the other thing. Since then, think about how many hundreds of stocks very unprofitable companies have come to market. They just like vacuumed up investor capital and it went poof. OK, literally like 50, 60, 70 percent. Do that in crypto. Do that in SPACs. OK. And so my point is, is like a lot of that capital that we hear is on the sideline is waiting to buy the, the, the dip and all that sort of stuff. It's gone. It went away. Right. And right. So, but let me just now push we back a little bit. Let me okay, just push not, back. Okay. It's not just one giant market, right, where everything yeah. was a high flyer multiple of 80 or whatever it is or price to sales was the right metric to use. Yeah. It's a whole different market of all different things. And I think that there's a lot in the value section that has just been left for dead and boring and not interesting for years 
that is attractive now. Is it? But aren't those yeah. the things that have really been outperforming, if you think about it, over the last couple months as the market's gotten very volatile, staples and energy and some financials and stuff like that? So they've rotated, and then the rest of the stuff, hundreds of stocks have just, like, evaporated investor cash. You know what I mean? Over the last... Yeah, so that doesn't... Just because they've rallied some, right? All right but I here's think the one thing that we know. In the last two times when we talked about this, when the market topped out in 2000, it took two years to bottom out. And the same thing in 2007, November, to the lows in March or April of 2009. And I guess the point is, is if we really are at an inflection point, if we really have very similar setups with much higher debt levels than we've ever had, and the Fed and central banks around the world with much fewer tools in their toolbox, I don't think it makes sense to buy this first dip, especially when we think about 2018, where was the Fed balance sheet relative to where rates were and everything like that? It was just in a different place right now, man. And so I just think sometimes sentiment I was overshot to the upside clearly last year, okay? It might do so to the downside. So just be careful with the S&P. But look, I mean, okay, I think that is all true, but we've already had a gigantic move in some stuff. So it's not, not in like the S&P and not in the NASDAQ. If all you right. really think all right. Well, I want we to need a split it. screen here. We need a split screen. I know. Screen. I love this. We split come back up. first day split back screen. and you fight. That's, that's why we're back here, right? Yeah. To have this sort of robust <laughs> conversation. We even got a man out of Dan.